Good afternoon, everyone. I'm my name is Hasmin Trusky, and I am the program and events manager at the Milwaukee Tech Hub Coalition. I am beyond excited for this panel today with all of these women. Um, we are going to be talking about your voice matters today. I am among women who are in the Milwaukee community who are doing some great things. They're in leadership roles and they are just trailblazing for others behind them. I wanna start with introductions. Um, so if each of you could go around and just talk about where you're from, what you do, your expertise and um, how you got to your role. Rosemary, let's start with you. Hello, um, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Rosemary Smith. I work at Molson Coors as a senior data management specialist where I am responsible for our disaster recovery environments in our Markham and Belgium data centers. I am also responsible for managing our DBAs that's uh, outsourced to uh, IT partners and on um, on a side note, uh, in addition to my role and responsibility at Molson Corps, I am also the chapter president for the Black Data Processing Associates Milwaukee chapter, where I am responsible for over 70 members. We have a high school computer competition program that we run every year that's available to all the students within the Milwaukee area and uh, surrounding suburbs. So again, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here with us today, Rosemary. Francesca, let's, let's go with you. Thank you, Hasmeen. And I'm so excited to be here with Rosemary and Jennifer. As Hasmeen shared, my name is Francesca. I'm the leader of HPGM. We are a professional organization that supports and lifts up the voices of Hispanic and Latinx professionals and students. Um, I've been in my role just over a few months and I've just been blown away by the warm welcome um, from the entire community. And I'm excited to be here um, with this group because I think that this topic is really important. Representation matters and um, I'm excited to get into a discussion um, with these awesome women. So thank you, Hasmeen. I think we're all excited for the discussion. Thank you, Francesca. Jennifer, go ahead. Hi, I'm Jennifer Rice. Um, my day job is I do work for a Milwaukee tech startup called Booth Central, uh, but I'm here today representing Women in Technology Wisconsin. I am the regional president for the Southeast region, and we are a 100% volunteer organization whose mission is to attract, grow, and retain women of all ages in tech-related careers, and we have three pillars that we focus on, women in, uh, we have a professional, so women at work, wit at work, uh, wit on campus, and wit for girls. So trying to get uh, girls interested at an early age and, and provide programming and support throughout the career journey. Thanks, Jennifer. So part of the Milwaukee Tech Hub Coalition is, our mission is to inclusively double the tech talent here in the Milwaukee region. We have identified that there's a gap and there's a need. And so really talking about representation, about voices that need to be heard in order to um, provide this awareness in the community. We wanna make sure that we're having um, this discussion today. So I wanna start and just ask each of you, why is the topic of diversity, equity and inclusivity important for each of you? Francesca, do you wanna start? Sure. I think, you know, from my perspective with my HPGM hat, um, we are the fastest growing population in the state of Wisconsin and really across the country. So I feel that we have a responsibility to, um, to be a part of the, the growing economy. We are drivers of the economy and technology is that those are the careers of the future, right? So ensuring that there, there is representation, um, there is inclusivity, but also there is intentionality behind creating brave spaces where people feel welcome, people have all types of lived experience. And so I think that's what I'm most excited about in my role is not only supporting the Hispanic and Latinx community as we move that agenda forward in our state, but also partnering with other communities of color because we know that in reality, we are the global majority. And so how do, excuse me, how do we collaborate together to ensure that 
we are creating those spaces where people feel welcome and included and valued for those nuances and their different lived experiences. Rosemary, did you want to add in here? Uh, thank you, um, Hathami. I would like to add that uh, for me, I look at uh, diversity, equity, and inclusivity and being important to me because I look at diversity is uh, where everyone is invited to the party. And then having <clears throat> the opportunity to participate in all the events at the party. And this is where equity comes in at because that means everyone has uh, that opportunity. And then for inclusion, it means that everyone gets to contribute to what's happening at the party, the songs that are being played, the activities that are happening. And I think this is important because it allows and enables an individual to, uh, to be their true authentic self. And that enables you or me and them to be more productive, more successful, and live their best life. 100% agree. Jennifer, what about you? Yeah, I love what, how, Rosemary, you just described all of that and what you said. I, I agree with it. And that hasn't necessarily been, been the reality that in the work environment that I have been in most of my career in tech. And that's why it's important to me because I think, you know, we want everyone to bring their true self, their whole self to work and be able to share in that. And the world is diverse and it is, it's 50% male and female, you know, world population and all different cultures. And that should be reflected in the the teams that we're part of, the, the tech that's developed. And, and that's why those, these topics are really important to me and to the community. Thank you. So you all have a story and a journey to talk, to tell um, about how you got into tech. Rosemary and Jennifer, this question is for you. How or why did you land in a career in tech? I can go first. Mine was totally by accident. I had no idea. I went to college and I was a marketing major. I had no idea about a tech career and what that would mean. It's, you know, I heard about it, but I was like, oh, that sounds scary. Like, I, I don't know. So, but ultimately early in my career, I ended up taking a sales job for a tech company and, and the rest is history. And I've spent my majority of my career in working for tech companies. And what I love about tech is that there's always something new and there's always this opportunity to learn something new. And you don't have to have years and years of experience because technology changes so fast. So you can become an expert or be perceived as an expert in a really short amount of time and be looking forward to whatever the next tech hot tech topic is or, or just the next tech skill. So there's ways to get in at any point and, and to get involved and, and grow expertise. And that's what I love about it because it's changing all the time. So I'm glad for kind of an accident that took me on this path. Now that's one of the things that I've been hearing um, lately is that people get to their tech careers very unconventionally. So. I love when I hear those stories. Rosemary, go ahead. Jennifer, I agree with you 100%. Uh, you say you started out in marketing in college. Well, I started out as accounting in college. So uh, I enjoyed the accounting courses, but they wasn't as challenging or exciting. So it's uh, funny how you said you transition afterwards. I transitioned to uh, computer information systems is what it was called during that time. And I enjoyed my classes. I enjoyed the opportunity I had to uh, do an internship with the United States Air Force. So there was so much more to the computer field than it was to the accounting field. I don't know if it was just timing or what, but once I took on um, my job with the uh, Air Force, I continued in computers. And once I relocated back to the Wisconsin area, 
it just seemed like there was just a wealth of opportunities. I could not believe the number of opportunities that was available to me. So, and like Jennifer was saying that it's it changes so fast and that you can take on, you know, position A and then move into position B with cloud technology that, you know, everybody's moving to. So, I mean, there is so much to learn in this space. And it's a journey, it's an adventure. So enjoy the ride. And that's what I've been doing. Life is a ride, right? We never know where we're gonna end up. <laughs> um, I, I feel like the majority of us can really relate to what I'm gonna say next. Part of my journey has been being the only Hispanic woman in the room. So not only the only woman, but the only Hispanic woman in the room as well. And there's times when I go to meetings and the first thing that I do is I look around and I, and I look at who looks like me, who else in here looks like me? Is there another woman in here? Is there another person of color in here? And it's just the very first observation. And I remember bringing that up to a senior leader before and he, it, he took a step back and he said, I've never thought about that. I don't go into meetings thinking who looks like me because everyone looks like me. <laughs> And it's true, you know, but I think there's a lot of value to that. So Jennifer and Francesca, this next one is actually for you. Why do you believe diversity in thought, perspective, and your background is important to either technological solutions or your team? Why do you think it's important to have a diverse voice at the table? Francesca? Well, I think... Um... You know, first and foremost, having a team that looks like your community, especially from our perspective, right, we're serving um, a part of our community. And so being able to be very intentional about ensuring that there are people uh, around the table, or if you happen to build your own table, <laughs> you know, that's a good solution too. Um, but that really reflects uh, what your community looks like. And we have a very diverse community here in Milwaukee. And I think we're starting to write our own story and our own narrative about why that's special, why that should be celebrated instead of talking about maybe how we can be less bad or less segregated. I think we can really embrace the diversity and the beauty that is the richness of that culture. And I think it's important when you think about perspectives and backgrounds being diverse because everyone brings a different lived experience. And that's where innovation and creativity comes from because I'll just be honest, I think it's boring if everyone has the same lived experience, looks the same, thinks the same. I don't think we're gonna get anything new or um, you know, genius out of that sort of environment. But then I also think about why that's important in the business community. And you know, from, from the data that we've seen recently from the Hispanic community, while we've you know, made up all of the net growth in the greater Milwaukee area over the last 20 years, we continue to be oversaturated in very low paying careers. And so how do we help to advance that, ensure that Hispanic professionals, their families and the communities thrive? It's really by finding meaningful opportunities to connect them with, to connect us with meaningful careers. And we know that technology is a huge part of our future. And, you know, what is that that they say, like the jobs that will exist in 10 years don't even exist right now. And so the more we can connect our community with those opportunities, I think overall we will become a place where Hispanics can thrive even more than they are now. Yeah, I would like to just kind of follow up on that too. I mean, I have definitely majority of my career been often the only woman in the room and when you're in a room of 10 or 20 30 men and one woman like it can be intimidating but I've also realized that you have to be able to speak up and offer a different opinion and it 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 allows better tech conversations it maybe it isn't always about being the smartest tech person in the room but being able to look at things from a different perspective, being able to be a good facilitator and bringing that to the table and just different skills. So being from a diverse background, from different 
just looking different and being different than everybody else in the room can bring these ideas, these perspectives and create better technology solutions, better teams and overall just make for better business. Thanks, Francesca and Jennifer. So we, I mean, we, we identify that this is definitely the observation that's ha that's has, that has happened, sorry. Um, but most of you are in senior leadership roles right now. And so you, you've been through this experience that maybe a person just entering into the tech world or their career field in general might not feel comfortable doing. So what advice, um, Rosemary, would you give to a, the younger generation on how to navigate these challenges of being a part of these underrepresented groups that some of us are in? Uh, what advice would I give the younger generation <clears throat> is to be open and receptive to new opportunities. Um, you have to be able to, to step outside of your comfort zone and, um, and challenge yourself. You have to be engaging. You have to uh, be able to meet people and tell them what it is that you're looking for, even if you don't know how to phrase it, but you can like ask for their input, ask for suggestions. And you have to be able to also join some of the um, other organizations that you may not have considered in the past. I mean, even at work, there's a lot of employee resource groups that you can reach out to, to meet other people. And then there's also um, different commi committees within your organization that you can volunteer to assist with. It's just about just challenge your, yourself to be receptive to those opportunities and welcoming to when they when they do come about. Am I up next, Hasmi? Yes, um, Jennifer, okay. if you wanna go ahead, Jennifer, and then Francesca, if you both wanna address the question, that would be awesome. Sure, um, for me, getting involved in this women in tech group has been a game changer for me. Um, meeting more women that have had shared experiences with uh, that I've had that similar, finding community, finding that sisterhood um, has been fantastic for me. And it's given me the opportunity to hear from a lot of other tech women and this common theme of get comfortable with the uncomfortable was something that I kept hearing about and really I have been trying to embrace that and I would encourage others to embrace that when you think about it. If there are gonna be uncomfortable situations and getting comfortable with some of that um, and challenging yourself to have a growth mindset, to make those connections that Rosemary was talking about, to put yourself out there, to join organizations, to ask for help. I mean, those can be uncomfortable, but they're an opportunity to grow and to meet. And you'd be surprised, most people want to help. I mean, the whole point of the WIT uh, in our organization is we want to help. We want to provide that support. We want to get people interested and realize the possibilities of a tech career and that they look all different. And it doesn't mean you have to be the coder in the back room. There's all kinds of opportunities and, and really jobs in the future are, they haven't even been created yet. They're, we don't even know what they're going to look like, but there's going to be some kind of tech aspect of it. So you know, get comfortable with that and put yourself out there and you're gonna open yourself up to huge possibilities. I think the best advice that I ever got from anyone when I was contemplating my career path was stand in your place of power. Nobody is you, right? And so being confident, putting in the time and effort, right, to, to commit, and be convicted to what it is you want to accomplish, but stand in your place of power. Look for people who you think can help you get to that next level. I can't tell you how many times it's been a cold call, a LinkedIn message, a walking up to somebody at an event because I felt so strongly and passionate about what I wanted to accomplish. And I had to get comfortable with people saying no, right? But you will find the gems who will say, how can I help you? What can I do? And be prepared to answer that question. It can't just be, I, you know, this, I don't even know, you know, fairy tale dream, but it, it might just be that one little next step. 
So don't not make progress on those big dreams or big goals that you have, but stand in your place of power, be uh, available and willing to know what you want. So when you do ask for help, maybe it's just an introduction. Maybe it's just, can I shadow you for this day? Um, and you might learn what you don't want to do, right? But the more that you can be proactive in taking those little steps, I think, um, you know, at least in, in our community, and I think as a woman in general, there maybe is a hesitancy about needing like a whole plan or needing to be really sure about what's going to work. And sometimes you're going to fail, but if you don't take that next step and put yourself out there, like Jennifer and Rosemary both said, you're not going to make a whole lot of progress moving forward. And for any uh, Latinos and Hispanics out there, like HPGM is is there for you. So we're, we're a great example of an organization you can reach out to that can help give you those resources, those insights, that access. ALUM is doing really great work. Elevation is doing really great work. There's all these organizations organizations that are literally, you know, ready to, to help you and help you advance like WIT as well and um, BDPA. So reach out. That's great. Um, I, I want to give a final thought to that too. I think when we talk about your voice matters. And we think about what that means. A lot of people think it's, I need to have this boldness or this courage in order to speak up at the table. But sometimes it's at what you, what all of you ladies said, asking for help, that is an act of, of boldness and courage. And it starts there. If you have a mentor or an advocate that can really help you and guide you into how to be uncomfortable and how to network, um, there's a lot of these things that people bring up and I've heard this from a lot of the youth that I work with. It, networking sounds easy and you're telling me to be uncomfortable, but I still don't want to, there's this fear. Well, I think uh, your voice matters means just taking one step. Do that one thing that for today, that's really going to just um, take you out of your comfort zone. So if that means sending an email to schedule a coffee, that's one step. And then you figure it out the day of that you're having your coffee. What top three questions can I ask this individual who is giving me an opportunity to have access to them and be my mentor? So start with the small things. And as, as you start with the small things, that boldness and that courage will continue to grow. So final thoughts. Um, one of the things that the Milwaukee Tech Hub is, is doing in the Milwaukee region is we're partnering with um, associations like the BDPA, WIT Wisconsin, and HPGM, we know that it's important in order to be in this space that we have to partner, we have to collaborate, we have to make Milwaukee known for being the next tech hub in the U.S. So with that being said, give us your final thoughts just to close us out about why it's important to lift up other organizations, why partnerships are important, and why collaborating collaborating with others in the same space is so important. Um, Francesca or Rosemary, if you either of you want to start, that would be awesome. Um, I can start. Uh, why I think it's important that we uh, collaborate with other organizations um, is because it makes the job easier. If we all come together with a common goal, that means that WIT Wisconsin is not doing all the work. It means that HPGM is not doing all the work. It means that BDPA is not doing all the work. It means that we can divide and conquer, and then that will make our lives easier because we have the same goals. We have the same initiatives that we're thriving for. So that would just make, and it gives us power. Like, um, Francesca's was talking about standing your power. We need to stand in the power that we have in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, and take that to the next level collectively. I was like ready to stand up, Rosemary. I'm so for this. I, you know, it's our time. You know, full stop. It's our time. We need to own our narrative. We need to collaborate because we're not going to do it alone. You know, I, I would be willing to bet that most of our organizations, especially Jennifer is being 100% volunteer led, 
I mean, there, there are limited resources, but think about what we can accomplish if we can all own our lane, do what we do really well and support one another. Um, I really do believe that partnership and collaboration is the key. And I, I feel very strongly that there should, I heard, uh, I was watching some pod, um, listening to a podcast the other day and it was talking about representation actually in film and someone said nothing about us without us and I feel like that concept um, is really applicable here so centering women centering people of color like we are the ones we've been waiting for so we need to own it and do it and collaborate together so that we can go further and faster together I'm excited just like the Milwaukee Tech Hub brought us all together and like, I'm excited to share our programming with these other organizations and, and learn about what they're doing because I do think together we, we're all working towards this common goal and there's so much opportunity in this community to make connections and, and help each other and um, I'm so excited to be part of, part of this and already like make these connections that just came out of this one meeting right here. I think we could, we could change the world or at least a little part of, a little part of Milwaukee. And I think that's super powerful. Thank you so much. I, I, I would echo and scream every single comment that you guys have just ended this conversation with. It's so important to just start with these conversations in general to bring awareness, education, so that people know what we're doing in the Milwaukee region. People need to know that we are standing in the gap for um, people of color, women, um, our diverse networks and individuals in Milwaukee that have so many skills that could be transferable. It starts with these conversations. And so I wanna thank each of you for your time today, for bringing your voice, shouting your voice in this panel. And I look forward to continuing these conversations and partnering with you guys in the future. Thank you so much.